I'm joined now by the strawway queen, Joanna Jedrzejczyk. <laughs> Dzień dobry, jak się masz? Dzień dobry, dzień dobry, mam się bardzo dobrze. Uh, hello guys, I, I'm good, I'm good, thank you so much. You're, you're, you're improving your Polish, so not good, I'm very happy. I'm working hard, I have some Polish ancestry, so I owe it to them to, uh, to figure it all out. Uh, that's nice, that's nice. How are you keeping in Poland, everything's going okay? Uh, yeah, it's everything is is fine, uh, all good. Uh, we're trying to keep the social distancing as much as we can. I'm very proud of uh, the people of government, of Polish people and the government, because uh, they made the right decisions in the right time. You know, people are getting sick every day, people dying every day, but but uh, it's getting better. You know, so uh, yeah, we really the the government is is strict. Uh, they changing rules every. Every few days they, 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 they bring new rules, uh, but people follow the rules. That's good, you know. We can stay healthy and, and protect ourselves, our families and each other. It seems things are going well there. I saw that uh, from Sunday yeah. to Monday, the cases yeah. dropped almost by yeah. half. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really good, you know. People are very strict, you know. Since, since I got back from the States, I was wearing masks, but since, uh, I think, last Thursday, uh, you're not allowed to go out without a mask. So, uh, but I was doing this for last five weeks. But that's good. That's good, you know. So, how have you handled it in terms of your life? I know you like to travel a lot. <laughs> you like to go out and take pictures, yeah. ride your bike. How uh, have you changed for you? Yeah, you know what? I honestly like 23 hours a day. I stay home. If I go out, I go for a walk or for short cardio run. Or today I did a laurel uh, roller blades. Uh, roller blading and you know <laughs> last week was hard I had really rough three days and I thought that I was going to hit the wall uh, like physically not only mentally but it's not bad it's not bad you know I have to stay strong it's good I have time for myself but of course I can go out I can see my all of my friends uh, hang out with my family uh, after such a hard camp and and and, and a, a real war, I want to go on vacation. So I cannot cannot wait uh, till everything will be will be good and we're gonna get clear to t travel. You know. <laughs> when you say you had a rough three days, was it just a, a tough stress uh, yeah. for you mentally? You were just uh, feeling down. Yeah, mentally, you know, I, I'm trying to every day. I'm trying to lift people up on my social on my social media talk to them and like bring bring them hope and uh, but i hit the wall you know and i i thought i was going to give up i didn't want to get up uh, of my bed uh, i didn't want to work out i didn't want to like eat healthy you know and i was like no then i felt even worse and worse so i was like no the healthy lifestyle is the is the key you know keep your mind strong uh, meditate uh, work out every day eat healthy that's a good thing you know so we haven't spoken since your incredible fight against Zhang Wei Li. Uh, uh, it's, it was a month and a half ago. It feels like it was a year and a half ago with the, all of this quarantine. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to ask you about right after the fight. Obviously, your adrenaline eventually goes down. When does it hit you that the fight's over and you you kind of come down a little bit? Oh, actually, in the hotel room? <laughs> or I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe in the locker room. But I didn't. I didn't have time to... To go to my locker room after the fight, so I, I went straight to the hospital. But when, probably when you get to the hotel room, when you see your family or friends, when you get to bed, you realize it's all over, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it takes that long for the adrenaline to come down. So how are you processing it, things? I mean, obviously the decisions oh. read. You're probably still in that moment, but as you're yeah. walking out <laughs> into the tunnel, like what's what's going through your mind? You know, honestly, honestly, I don't sleep three, three nights, three days, three nights after the fight, you know, and it, it always uh, take a while, you know, because we prepared for so many weeks uh, before the fight and in one night it's all over, you know, you have to change your lifestyle, you, 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 you allowed to like travel, eat crazy stuff and, and do crazy stuff, you know, so because camp is a camp, you know, hard work, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't remember what was in my mind when I was walking under the tunnel after the fight. I, I don't remember this moment, you know. I was very proud of myself. I remember that I wanted to take care of my body. I wanted to check if uh, there was no damage on my brain, uh, if, I, if, if my body was good, you know. Yeah. So from recent interviews I've seen with you, you still haven't watched the fight back. 
So what's your recollection yeah. of the fight? Like, what do you remember from it? Because a lot of fighters, when they're in there, they're in the moment and you, you kind of, your, your brain kind of shuts off and you, you enter yeah. cruise control. So what's your recollection of that night? Uh, I don't know. I, I was like, I was hard on myself and I was like, do more, do more, do more. And, and every round was a war, you know, and every, every, every minute, every, every second of the fight was, was a war. And I, I, I gave my best. Every second of second, uh, every second of the, uh, this fight with Willy Zhang, I, I gave my best. I did my best, and and that's the thing, you know. I was like, what can you do better? And I was like, but I'm doing everything I can, you know. And I did, I did, I just did, I I, I did my best. I'm proud of myself, of, of my team, how we prepared, how we put on show. I didn't get the win, and uh, somehow I'm 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 broken. I'm sad. Uh, I didn't get where I wanted to be but I'm happy and proud of myself in the same time. Well, the next best thing you can do if you don't get a win in that kind of situation, the championship level, is to create an economy where people want to see you fight for the title again. And you did that. Everybody wants to see this rematch now. <laughs> um, is that something that, yeah. that you're looking forward to that you think is the next step in, in the division? I feel like I don't have to, like, even before the, uh, that fight, I didn't have to prove anything to people, you know, my legacy is so strong. And of course, there are people who are saying like, oh, but you lost like few fights, like, of course, but, uh, but my legacy is so strong. And I didn't have to prove to people that I was the, the right person to fight for the bed. And, and even after losing the fight with that champ, I don't have to prove it again. I don't have to do two, three four more fights to, to be the challenger, you know, if uh, UFC, Dana White, the matchmakers gonna decide that I'm the next challenger, I will, I will go and fight, you know, and like, what a reason to fight with like top eight, top five, like number five or number eight uh, ranked girl, there is no reason, you know, because uh, I proved that uh, I'm at the top, I'm at the top, I'm on the championship level and there is not so many of us on the level like this. You mentioned your legacy, and uh, and obviously that means the world to you. Should you not win the belt again? Are you able to rest easy anyways? Like, are you are you happy with your legacy as it is right now, or do you, do you have a need to win the belt one more time to show that you're still at the top? <laughs> I, I don't have to, you know. I, I feel that I show it already, you know. Uh, I showed that in my last fight, you know, and... I want to win the belt. It's my big dream. I want to I want to I want to have this belt again, but I felt like I don't know, even without the belt, I I feel like I feel like I curb myself as in champ that I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what to say, you know. I feel like I don't have to in the same time I wanna, but like I don't have to prove anything to people, you know. And if I will wanna, like if I gonna wake up and and have an idea to fight for the belt, I will do that, you know. So at this point, it's just a desire to prove it to yourself. Like, what, what other yeah. people say doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> but then I'm like, why? You have, like, six belts uh, at home uh, from back in the day. Why do you need this belt to have this belt physically, you know? I'm, I'm like, really, like, it's hard. I, I'm not proud of myself. Uh, not very often, you know, but I'm, I'm very proud of myself. Uh, uh, of the performance I put on the March March the seventh in Vegas, you know, I'm very hard on myself. I'm very hard on myself, but I'm very proud. So how hard is it to to rationalize that? I mean, you say you have the six belts at home. You know that you don't need them any anymore, but you have to you have to keep that fuel going. So how hard is it to keep yeah. that desire to keep to keep going back to the gym day in and day out? Say I need this. I need to have the championship belt back for myself. I'm a competitor, you know, and I, lo I love to challenge myself every single day uh, in a business, uh, in my regular life or in the sports life, you know. So I like to challenge myself and definitely fighting the best people in the world. It's, it's my it, it, it's my challenge, you know, so so I stay motivated. I stay very focused. I stay very disciplined, you know, every single day. You say you're at home now 23 hours a day, um, obviously because of the, the coronavirus and, and all the uh, yeah. different government restrictions. How has that changed you? Have, you know, when, now you have a lot more time to think. You're not in the gym as much, you're not in the moment, <laughs> but you have a lot of time to yourself, and that's important. A lot of people are talking about how that's helped them and helped uh, put things into perspective for them. Have you, have you gained any sort of different perspective from that? I, I'm trying to be busy, you know, like uh, I, cook, I cook for my sisters. I go, I train. 
Uh, I'm back to learning Spanish. Uh, I started le learning how to play piano. Uh, I talk to my friends. Uh, I do lots of uh, lots of. I did some mental coaching for kids uh, for Marching Gortat Foundation, NBA. One of the former NBA uh, players. Uh, so I, I keep on busy. You know, honestly, I keep on busy. You know, the time flies so fast. So I keep on busy. I never get uh, bored, and I, I I keep on busy. But you know, like if I look deep in, into my soul, I feel like, I feel like, you know, I, I somehow I want to change the world, but I want to keep on doing what I've been doing for last last years, you know, last years. So, yeah. When you look at the division, it's yourself. It's obviously the champ, uh, Jean Vili, it's Rose, it's Jessica Andrade. Do you see anybody else in that mix? Is Tatiana Suarez someone that you think is, is in that title conversation? Because it seems like there are only really four standout uh, competitors right now that are in the title mix. Yeah, that the, that's the thing. There's so many. Like I feel, I feel like, feel and I know that all of the UFC athletes are amazing, you know. Uh, UFC fighters are, are an amazing athlete. And, but uh, there is always a top five, you know, that really matter. And and I feel like it's Willie Zhang, it's me, it's Rose, it's Jessica Andreas, and it's it's Tatiana Suarez, five of us, you know, like t super top level girls. Yeah. Is it cool to see that the division's grown so much since it started? I mean, when you when you got there and, and the division started, you were really at the very top and, and nobody could touch you. Yeah. And now it's gotten so much more competitive. Everybody's had to train yeah. to beat you. I mean, that's what everybody's eyes were on, were you, and, and coming up with a strategy to defeat you. Um, yeah. So how, how, are you proud of how the division's grown in that sense? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud uh, where we got. You know, the strawy division is the lightest division in the UFC, but definitely we put on fire, you know. We bring fireworks uh, to, the, to the fight, you know, in the fight. So that's a, that's a good thing, and I'm very happy to see uh, us, women taking over the UFC events, you know. I'm very proud of us. Ronda started, and I was trying to continue that. There's so many girls who are putting on a hell of a fight, you know. That, that's, that's good. That's good. So from your last fight, obviously there was a lot of swelling, and, and uh, you mentioned there was some concern about a head injury when you went to the hospital. Yeah. Every day when you looked in the mirror and your appearance was changing and changing and changing, uh, how did you feel about it when you, when you were seeing this? <laughs> I was happy because... Uh, first three, four, five days, I was not myself, you know, I look like the other person, every day, different person, you know, so it was kind of painful, you know, and, and it was, it was, it was good to um, see my, my face getting back to normal, you know, every single day, but it took a while, it took a while, but the swellness from the forehead went down the next day, I couldn't see on my eyes, uh, for two, two days, but it was good. It was good, you know. That's the price we have to pay for the for the for the for the fight, you know. Afterwards, you went with your family, and I guess you guys went. I don't know if it was Universal Studios <laughs> or something. And your your nephew was with you. I don't know how old he is, but was he making any comments about how you looked? Because obviously, he's not uh, using his aunt that way. Yeah, we 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 went to we spent three days in Vegas, and then we went to LA and. We got back home week after the fight, but uh, he was scared, you know. My father was scared. My sister was scared. She was helping me uh, shower, change after after the fight. Uh, my friend was there. So, you know, I had totally different plan. I, I, I planned to go out, hang out with my friends, my family, you know, get some drink, go and dance. But it was impossible. So my, my, my family, they got scared that that's something would happen to me, could happen to me, you know, but, but it was only swellness. It was only a big bruise on my, on my, on my face. And yeah, thanks God, nothing happened. Nothing serious happened to my body, to my brain. Do they say anything to you? Like, why do you have to keep doing this? I mean, you're, you're already the best of all time yeah. in the division. Do they, of course. Do they try to talk to you? Every, every fight, every fight, my family, they are like, it's going to be the last one. And after every fight, I, was it the last one? You know, and I'm like, Oh, right now I don't want to hear and think about fighting, but I'm back to training, you know, as much as I can. And I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm a real warrior. And after putting on fight like like the one in Vegas, I want to keep on, keep on, uh, keep on working hard and fighting, you know, but it's hard to say.
goodbye, you know, but I don't want to retire it. And, and, and the last fight just, just show me that, you know, I'm still at the top and I should keep on doing this. All right. And, um, and finally, uh, how long of a time do you want to take off before you, you, your next fight? Have you thought about that at all? I don't know. I want to enjoy my life. You know me that I love to do so many different things outside the octagon. And right now I cannot uh, do my sponsorship obligations. I cannot travel. So definitely after everything will be, will be, will be, will be done uh, with the uh, coronavirus. I want to travel. I want to go on vacation and I want to, I want to enjoy my life. And I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I don't have uh, I don't have any idea. Well, I think this interview was good enough that I don't need to ask you about Colby Covington. Do you agree? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Okay, perfect. Of we'll course. wrap it up then. All right, Joanna, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and, Thank you uh, so and much. Best, uh, best wishes to you and your family in Poland. I appreciate you. Stay strong, guys. And I know it's hard. Uh, it's very hard for all of us. But uh, let let's let's live up each other every single day, you know, and le let's motivate each other every single day. Uh, there are good days coming, you know, I promise to you. So thank you so much for everything. Bye.